Hi, I'm Bern Simpson. This VR stereo photo video is a look at 3D views of space in stereoscopic VR 180. This VR video is intended to be viewed in a VR headset to show the 3D stereoscopic views. The presentation I've broken down into three parts. In this part, part one, we will look at stereo views of stellar visualizations and Apollo moon missions. In part two, we'll look at the solar system and Mars. And in part three, we'll look at the space shuttle, the International Space Station, and finally, Earth views from space. The stereoscopic views I'm showing are mostly taken from two camera positions. This is from sometimes accidental camera shifts and sometimes intended shifts. In some other cases, there can be a subject positional shift, such as a planet rotation or a stellar drift, that can be combined into a stereoscopic view. With VR headsets, these twin views can now be displayed as a stereoscopic slideshow. This show is a sampling of some of the images I've accumulated. I'd like to thank NASA and ESA. Most of the images I'm showing are from their archives and are shown with their generous image use policy. First, we're going to look at stellar visualizations. Most astronomical objects are too far away to see in three-dimensional perspective. Scientific and art visualizations separate the image layers to create depth from a 2D image. The image is created with astronomical knowledge, but may not be scientifically accurate. The instances in particular have been greatly compressed, and thus the objects in these images may span across many light years of space. The image here is nicknamed Mystic Mountain, a bright pillar in the Carina Nebula. The 2D image was released in 2010 in celebration of the 20th anniversary of the Hubble Space Telescope launch. The stereo view is one frame of a video fly-through, a visualization done by the NASA Hubble Space Telescope Group. The Carina Nebula is a vast star-forming region in the Milky Way galaxy. Within the nebula, new stars are formed out of dense, dark clouds of gas and dust. The bright, high-energy radiation from the mass of young stars erodes away at the dark gas, forming these bright, tall pillars. This is the Horsehead Nebula, a dark cloud of dense gas and dust located just below the belt of Orion in the sky. This was captured in the infrared by Hubble in 2013. A dark featureless scene is revealed as a glowing gaseous landscape from the warm parts of the clouds glowing in the infrared. The scientific visualization of the Horsehead Nebula, as seen in the infrared from Hubble, has been augmented by ground-based observations from the European Southern Observatory's Visible and Infrared Survey Telescope for Astronomy nicknamed VISTA. This stereo view is again one frame of a video visualization done by the NASA Hubble Space Telescope Group. This is a stellar visualization by a Finnish astrophotographer and visual artist, J.P. Mezzovanio. It is shown on his Astro Anarchy website. Mezzovanio does some of the very best stereoscopic conversions of photographs that he's captured with his telescopes. What you're seeing here is part of the Sol Nebula, which is an emission nebula inside the constellation of Cassiopeia. Here's another image from Mezzovanio. The open cluster centered in this image is known as Melot 15. It is embedded within a much larger glowing nebula identified as IC 1805. The interesting structure at the center of this image is a giant area of hydrogen gas that is caused to glow by the intense UV radiation from the massive stars of the Melas 15 star cluster. You can see the dust and gas clouds twisted by the pressure of the intense radiation. This is an interesting image. Uh, this is a stereo image of the Veil Nebula. It was created due to the movement of the filaments between two observations. The twin image was captured by the Hubble Space Telescope, the first image in 1997 and the second image in 2015. Here's a close-up of the Veil Nebula image. 
it forms a very interesting image, but it's not very clear what its stereoscopic depth really relates to. As now we leave stellar visualizations, we're going to be looking at NASA's Apollo moon missions. The Apollo missions ran from 1969 to 1972. This is the Saturn V rocket from Apollo 13 mission in 1970. Here's a close-up of the image. There were seven Apollo missions that placed men on the moon, Apollo 11 to Apollo 17 missions. Apollo 13 was a failed mission that didn't land men on the moon. Here we are on the moon with Apollo 11 in 1969. Apollo 11 lunar module was named Eagle after the bald eagle. Apollo 11 was the first mission to land humans on the moon. This again is Apollo 11 with the right side of the lunar module. The site where the lunar module landed was named Tranquility Base. This is the lunar module of Apollo 14 in 1971. It's very similar looking. And here we are with Apollo 16 in 1972. The lunar module is with the lunar roving vehicle and the flag in front. These lunar images are from two photos with the camera shifted between the two shots. People sometimes wonder why the flag appears to be fluttering in the wind. With this stereo image, it is clear the flag did not change between the two stereo shots. This again is Apollo 16. And here you can see when there is a change between the two stereo shots. Astronaut John Young is saluting a flag while jumping on the moon. This yielded a small change between the two stereo images and making him hard to merge. Here is Apollo 17 in 1972. Commander Gene Cernan is saluting the flag. The camera separation uh, between the two shots was substantially more than eye spacing. This leads to a hyperview that you see here. This is back to Apollo 11 in 1969, the first lunar mission. An hour after Neil Armstrong first stepped onto the lunar surface, astronaut Buzz Aldrin selected a pristine patch of soil to make this footprint and then photographed it in stereo. Here's a view of the desolate lunar surface from Apollo 12 with astronaut shadow on the left there. This is a close-up of the Apollo 12 photo I just, seen, just saw. It's giving more of a sense of the lunar desolation. Here's the lunar surface from Apollo 14 with astronaut Edgar Mitchell holding a TV camera on the desolate lunar surface here. Here's Apollo 12 with its communication antenna. Notice the astronaut just behind the lunar module there. This is from Apollo 15 in 1971. David Scott is using a sighting scope to align the antenna at the Earth in order to use TV camera with the rover. This is the lunar rover of Apollo 17. The rover was used to carry equipment and samples. This is from Apollo 15 with the rover in the final parking place. The little bit of color on the rover contrasts the gray lunar landscape. Here is a space view of the lunar surface. This is the Atkin crater that Apollo 17 command module passed directly over. The crater is on the south pole far side of the moon. And here's a 3D view of the moon from the Earth. The final three images is a sequence from Apollo 11 showing Earth rise over the moon. This is over the Mars Smithy Eye region on the moon. The images were taken before the separation of the lunar and command modules. And this is the end of part one of VR stereo photos of space. 
do look for part two with stereo views of the solar system and Mars. And I thank you for watching.